Okay, in this video I'd like to talk about the sequence of bend forms that you get with increasing flow speed. So if you think about the Holstrom diagram, uh, when the flow speed is very low, uh, versus high, um, down at the bottom uh, you have uh, no motion on the bed. Um, so the you know it depends on the grain size what flow speed that needs to be, and then as the flow speed increases with time, you start to get grains that roll and saltate, and then as the grain size gets higher and higher, the length of time the grains are off the bed increases. And for small enough grains at very high flow speed, uh, you can get uh, tr gains transported in suspension. All right. And so bed forms are created by the dynamics of the roll and the saltation of grains, because these are the it's in this zone here that the grains in the flow interact. Uh, with the bed and uh, create bed forms. So bed forms are any topography on the um, the surface of a bed. Um, it's the sequence of bed forms has been studied extensively in flumes. So this is sketches that represent those uh, flumes. And uh, often they start with a flat surface in no flow water, and then they increase the flow speed through time, which is represented by these diagrams going upward. If you start with a, a flat bed, uh, once an irregularity um, is created, it will start the propagation of those irregularities into a chain of ripples. So you often have a gradational change uh, from a flat bed into, into the formation of ripples. Okay. And that uh, is related to ripples are the stable bed form when you have enough flow to transport sediment as bed load. As the flow speed continues to increase, the erosion on the ripples is so fast that they tend to flatten out and the um, turbulence in the flow creates bed forms with longer wavelengths called dunes. And this transition between these two bed forms is usually abrupt. And the wavelength of the dunes is significantly greater, or the spacing between crests is significantly greater in dunes than it is in ripples. And I didn't draw it quite to scale here, but the height is also uh, uh, larger than for dunes than for ripples. Okay. Then as the flow speed increases even more, the dunes start eroding quite a, uh, more and more, and the bed flattens out. Basically, the, the downstream speed of the water flow is so fast that uh, the grains are eroded off the tops of the dunes and deposited in the trough very quickly. That's often a gradational change. into what we call uh, into this planar bed uh, configuration. Okay. Then in flumes, if the water is uh, shallow enough, and this, this line uh, here, and each one represents the water depth, the, there is a feedback between the bed and the flow, and you start to get deformation of the surface of the water that is in phase with the uh, bed forms on the bottom. And so this, these are actually called anti-dunes, and that's because 
they actually migrate upstream instead of downstream. So what's happening with the anti-dunes is, so this is your sediment surface here. The flow is, is hugging the surface and there's no separation zone on the, the downstream side. And so what happens is that grains here get pulled out into the flow and the grains here get plastered into the uh, upstream side of the dune. So the migration of the dune through time is actually in the upstream direction. So that a new lamina would be something like this. Okay. So you have the water flow in this direction but then you have the dune migration in the opposite direction. Okay. So these uh, anti-dunes are not very stable uh, bed forms and they uh, only form if the surface of the water can mimic the shape of the bed form. So scientists have also done flume experiments with the uh, flume closed on the top. So this sequence of, of bed structures has uh, it inhibits the surface of the flow from changing. And what you see in this particular case is the same sequence where you start out with a flat bed and as the flow speed increases you start to get ripples and then dunes and then planar beds here but you don't actually get the anti-dunes because the geometry of the experiments inhibit the formation of those dunes. So what we actually see in the rock record are ripples, dunes, in planar bedding. Yeah, it's a typical thing.